Yo guys, we're back again with another delve into the somewhat murky world of tabletop gaming. Yep, if you're a fan of fantasy or sci-fi, well, we've got something to whet your appetite, and we may even have something for you historical gamers out there. So, sit back and relax as we take another whirlwind tour of what's cool in the industry and what might just be coming your way sometime soon. High Tech have been releasing some really cool gothic sci-fi models lately. And while they've previously limited themselves to the kind of traditional space knights that you can play as proxies in the likes of 40k, well, they've just created their first vehicle, the Landcopter Eclipse. Of course, High Tech have not interrupted the production of their sci-fi knights, with their range continuously being updated with a number of chaotic terrorizers, more of their imperious arc fathers, and an extension of the existing range of the Biotech Covenant miniatures. So if you're looking for something to spice up your existing 40k forces, then the Arc Father models are somewhat larger than the Games Workshop models, typically coming in around 45mm to the eye. But if you don't mind an epic warrior to lead your army, and let's face it, who doesn't, well then why not go and check them out? Mercs. Well, it's a fast-paced sci-fi skirmish game set in the near future where mega corporations employ private armies to wage war for resources and profit. Which kind of sounds a bit like what's going on today. Anyway, I digress. The latest faction to hit the scene are the Texaco faction. These rootin tootin hombres owe their concept style to the Wild West, as much as they do to the near future. Anyway, so expect some red-hot two-gun action when these gunslingers take to the table. And if you haven't seen any of the merch miniatures before, then take a look at some of the rather cool starter sets available for the game. Our buddies over at Worthy Painting are currently getting our starter sets ready for some top sci-fi action. So stay tuned on the Beast of War website for updates regarding our upcoming coverage of mercs. If you're a fan of historical gaming, then you'll be excited to hear about the launch of Pike and Shot, the war game from Warlord Games, set around the wars of the 16th and 17th century. That's right, you'll be able to field ranks of roundheads and skirmishing bands of boozed up Irishmen, versus the stuffed shirts of the Royalists. Perhaps you could even turn the tide of the English Civil War. To shore up your ranks for the launch, Warlord have released a box set containing soldiers from the new model army. So any Royalist players better beware as you bring the elite ranks of Cromwell's finest to the table. So remember to look out for the release of Pike and Shot at Salute 2012 in the London Excel Centre and check out the offers on the Warlord Games website. Hey, you might just pick yourself up a bargain. I'm on miniatures of Let Loose, another pair of fantastically fun miniatures in the form of Fat Man and Gobleon. One rather rotund superhero, and the other the emperor of all goblinhood. I'm on have a great cartoon style, and you can always rely on them to get something with a little bit of humor in it. Just right for scaring the beard off those serious wargaming types. If you're a fan of Marvel and DC Comics, then you gotta check out Hero Clicks from WizKids. This is a collectible miniatures game and it's had its ups and downs, but despite the criticism for the quality of the sculpts, the game certainly has a legion of devoted fans and an ever-expanding range of miniatures. The game itself is pretty easy to get to grips with and allows you to play with any of your favourite heroes and villains across the DC and Marvel universes. You might even indulge in a bit of crossover warfare with Spider-Man vs Batman or Superman vs the Hulk. Ok, many die-hard fans will be appalled by the idea, but if you ever wanted to know who would win between the Cape Crusader and Doctor Doom, well this is your way to find out. Every good war game needs a competent and preferably cool looking commander. And Relics, well, it's no different. These new command models encompass the three main factions from Tor Gaming's flagship game. However, did you know that there's another faction in the works? The Cthulhu are a faction whose look is based on the tentacled monstrosities dreamt up by the late and great HP Lovecraft. 
and they'll be going into production soon. Of course, even if you don't play relics, you might want these models for use in some kind of mind-flaying monster for Dungeons & Dragons or your game of Cthulhu. It's completely up to you. Here's something new for you guys. Our buddy Will Wheaton has his new show Tabletop out. Yes, it's a show where Will and some other celebrity buddies show off a cool tabletop game. The first episode is showcasing Small World. So rather than me blether on about this, let's just show you a clip. Now, uh, how many dudes do you have left? I have two. Okay, now if you're gonna attack with your dragon, mm -hmm. a dude has to accompany your dragon. He's okay. the guy who like keeps the dragon on a leash, uh, and he's oh. like, no, don't kill them, kill the hobbits over there. Dragon Ranger. So, so what you want to do, <laughs> if if I, I can't believe I'm gonna tell you this, tell me this, but um, you probably just want to take your dragon there and there. Uh huh. No, no. I actually, think she actually, bought it. Listen, what, what you want to do is, <laughs> Got is take, her. she's not even listening to me. <laughs> yes, anyway. she's, she's just not. like, stop, she's just like keep Damn. talking, Wheaton. That's adorable that you said. Right. Well, guys, what do you think about it? We love it. We think the show looks great. And Will, we're just waiting for our invites to come and game with you, mate. If you're a fantasy wargamer, then you're probably already aware of the excellent work done by the guys over at Bane Legions. Yeah, these guys produce some of the highest quality resin sculpts available in the market. And while they may command a slightly higher price, this is certainly a case of you get what you pay for, because there's not a bubble in sight. The Bane Legion Studio has been updating the images on its website to show off all of their superb hero and monster models with brand new paint jobs by Sebastian Piquet. Sebastian, my apologies if I've pronounced your name wrong. But anyway, Sebastian is from Deadfish Painting, and isn't his stuff absolutely gorgeous? Flames of War, many might say that it's THE consummate World War II tabletop war game of the moment. And now it's in its third edition. Based around 15mm miniatures, it allows you to play truly epic historical engagements without breaking the table or breaking your bank. So if you've ever been interested in an easy to start war game that isn't based on elves and goblins, or spacemen and ray guns, then this is a great game to pick up. To coincide with the release of the third edition rulebook, Battlefront have also released Blood, Guts and Glory, a source book containing forces expansions for the late war US and German forces, including some of the famous names like General Patton. Basically this book allows you to fight big tank battles. And who doesn't want to do that? Anyway, if this has piqued your interest, Beasts of War have reviewed that book, and you can check out the video by following this QR code on screen. With the launch of the Vampire Counts Army book by Games Workshop, Vampires and the Undead, well, they've been all the rage. Check out these undead models from Titan Forge, the Flesh Rippers. We reckon these guys will be fantastic proxies for Vampire Gaunt's Tomb Horrors, or even just big ghouls in any type of fantasy game. But no Vampire Army would be complete without Vampire Bats, and Titan Forge have you covered there too, with these blood-sucking resin monsters set to bite the neck of your opponent's army, and then leave them a dried-out husk. If you can't get enough of your vampires or everything ghoulish or undead, then you might want to check out the Vampire Week on Beasts of War. We covered the release of the Games Workshop Vampire Counts Army Book and took an in-depth look at the new models, units and magical paraphernalia the book had to offer. Not only that, but we had some of the new miniatures in the studio and Daryl took a look at them in his own unique way, of course. Anyway, check out the Beast of War website, you can do a search for Vampire Week, or follow the link or QR code on the screen to be taken to a week's worth of blood-sucking entertainment. Cyborg miniatures are well known for miniatures that will work very, very nicely with the game 40k. So, it's not surprising that their latest sci-fi release has more space knights with more than a whiff of the gothic about them. The Grail Knight stands as a very cool looking miniature in its own right, and with his power axe and pistol combo, he could easily fit into any Space Marine's army as a character or an elite warrior to lead your force to victory. And the Archangel could easily be one of those truly angelic chapter masters. But that's not all. Did you know that Cyborg also do fantasy miniatures? If you're a regular viewer of On The Table or a visitor to our website, you'll no doubt be aware of that. 
but for the rest of you, just have a look at Cyborg's latest dwarf models. Over the last few episodes, we've been showing you how to play Infinity. This episode's no different, so have a look at this. In this video, we're going to introduce the Impetuous Rule. Impetuous is a characteristic that some Infinity troops possess. The Impetuous Soldier longs to engage in combat with the enemy and feel them die by his hands. An Impetuous Trooper gets one extra order that only he can spend. This Impetuous Order has its own rules. All Impetuous Orders must be performed at the beginning of a player's active turn, before spending the orders in the normal orders reserve. It is compulsory that one of the short skills of an Impetuous Order must be to move, always towards the nearest enemy, even if they are out of his line of fire. And with an Impetuous Order, the model must always move the entire first value of its movement attribute. But it can move less if during its movement, it engages in base contact with an enemy. The other short skill of the Impetuous Order may only be to perform an attack, to dodge, or to move again. Bear in mind the sequence doesn't matter, so for example, the player can declare to attack first, and then to move. A player can stop his Impetuous model from acting by spending one order to cancel the Impetuous Order. Let's see some in-game examples. This Magister Knight is going to spend his Impetuous Order. He is an enemy close to him, a Marat Yagat. So close that just by performing one movement short skill, the Magister could engage in close combat with him. But this is a risky action, as he will be exposed to the line of fire of enemies. Two, Shavasti Shrouded. But the Impetuous Order obliges him to move. The Magister Knight declares his first short skill of the Order, to move. This allows him to reach base contact. All enemies with line of fire, the two Shrouded, and also the Yaogat, declare they will shoot. The Magister Knight declares a close combat attack as a second skill order. The Yaogat opposes his shot to the Knight's role but the shrouded shots don't face any direct opposition, so they perform two normal rolls. The Magister Knight gets a 12 for its close combat roll, so it is a success. The Yaogat gets a 7 for its shooting roll, which is a success but lower than the Magister Knight's roll. The shrouded gets a 9 for its shooting roll, which is a successful impact. The shrouded sniper gets a 19 for its shooting roll, which is a missed shot. The Magister Knight wins his clash against the Yaogat and slams him with a powerful sword blow. Only one of the Shrouded manages to hit the Knight. The Yaogat must make an armor roll due to the impact received from the Magister Knight. But the Knight must also make an arm roll because of the Shrouded's successful shot. Stay tuned in future episodes where we can delve even deeper into the game of Infinity. And if you can't wait for that, remember we have a dedicated Infinity Hub over at Beasts of War. That wraps up another episode. Remember the Beasts of War team are going to Salute 2012 in the London Excel Centre. So in future episodes, expect a little bit of flavour from the event. And if you're lost for something to do on Saturday the 21st of April and you're in the proximity of London, then you might want to call in to Salute, where you'll get to see not just us, but some of the biggest names in the industry and get involved in some really cool events and exhibits like the Beasts of War Hobby Lab. If you want to find out more, you can visit the Beasts of War website, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or check out our YouTube channel, where you might find a few Easter eggs that haven't appeared on the main Beasts of War website. If you want more information on Salute 2012, then check out the Salute website. And until next time, yes, of course, you have been watching On The Table.